Hey everyone, thanks for tuning back into my YouTube channel. Yesterday was Memorial Day holiday, and I wanna thank all who have served our great country and have provided the fact that we have the freedoms to be able to go out and do the things we wanna do, like spend time in the outdoors, like on the water and in the woods, and, and uh, we are just so blessed to live in this great nation, and for that I salute the uh, armed forces and those that uh, make it possible for do possible to do the things that we do. Yesterday, my son and I were wanting to head to the lake. However, it's not typically when I want to go to the lake because a holiday up on Lake Fork can be really busy. The lake is already busy as it is because it's one of the top lakes in the country. But I noticed there was some storms that have been coming through throughout the weekend and they were going to subside between the hours of 7 and 11. So that was going to provide a window for us to get right up to the lake and maybe get some fishing done before it started to pour down and the possibility of thunderstorms and lightning, that's not for me, we'll get off the water before that happens. When I think of storming activity, low light conditions, and the possibility of the barometric pressure dropping, I think of pursuing after fish that are feeding, taking advantage of those low light conditions and it kind of loosens them up to leave the cover to pursue bait fish, to take advantage of those low light conditions where the fish are actually at an advantage over pursuing those prey because the prey can't see them coming nearly as well. They don't really have to set up an ambush as much. They begin to roam and those power fishing techniques like crankbaits, top waters, uh, swim jigs, those moving type baits can really get a lot of attention during those periods. So that's what I had in mind that kind of sets up this video but I also wanted to share the fact that this is going to be a new segment or series and this is going to be the Geico on the water series so if you like these videos it'll be under that that heading or playlist Geico on the water and uh, with that kind of sets up our day let's get right into it So much of what happens out here in the success or failure of your fishing trip relies on decision making and the choices you make on the areas you fish, the lures you throw, and how you work them or present them all play an important part in the end result. first bait I want to choose with this wind blowing right in here is something that'll create some sort of disturbance on the top of the water because of the waves and the light penetration you want to throw something that will actually draw some attention to itself something like a buzz bait or maybe a walking bait Just because whenever you have kind of low light conditions or clouds or diminish light penetration in the water column, a lot of times the fish will have a more challenging time trying to locate the bait. It might not be challenging to the fish at all. It just may be that under these conditions, they're more aggressive and more aggressive approach. There's one <laughs> approach becomes more appealing to them it's always exciting no matter how big or how small the first fish of the day is usually contact with life with trying to figure out what the fish want and just to be able to get out there the right choice with a buzz bait and catch a little fish step in the right direction that first bite a lot of times will lead you till the next one. 
or towards the next one. Oh golly, look at that. <laughs> There's some fish right here utilizing this kind of the wind blowing right in here. They're not very big, but they're fun. There's one. Ha <laughs> ha. We're getting a little bigger. I switched up to a swim jig. Sometimes those fish don't want to come clear to the surface. So swim jig just a little bit below the surface, still kind of mimicking a bait fish can get you some bites where it's just kind of subsurface like that. There's definitely some fish using that area. She's got a quarter ounce swim jig with a little swim bait trailer there. Looks like bait fish that be chasing around up in the shallows. Way back there. Oh golly! Big big something was chasing up there. Oh what through my face baby just smoked it. Net? Look at that net? One. Yeah, net me. Let me please. Oh, look at that one. Oh. Golly, this guy's hot. <laughs> Woo! <laughs> that right there is a lake forks. Golly, look at that. That's what people come to lake for. Can't tell you about I gotta give you the play by play. There was a roll, like something looked like a beaver or something up in that super shallow water. Get this fish off. <sighs> My heart's beating. He was not coming off. Look how thick he is. Super shallow water. I bombed my buzz bait in the back of that little drain back there. And he just tomahawked it. I hope some of that footage comes up or you're able to see that footage. You can see she's post spawn. She's got all these, see, she's got all these wounds stuff from spawning that fish was that fish was out of control look how thicker she is right here in the center here sorry my camera's off kilter i'm all out of breath that fish is a beautiful fish great net job daniel <laughs> that fish was so shallow i mean unreal That right there just made the day for me. Okay, girl, go eat a bluegill. <laughs> that was awesome. That was too much fun. I, that, that strike was incredible. I'm pumped. Let's get another one, Daniel. <laughs> Great net job. Oh, too cool. Okay, that was the bummer of summer right there. Obviously, I'm glad I had my back camera going on on the Yellow Tech, but this camera on the Chesty wasn't on. So you clearly didn't get to see someone throw a cannonball in the water on top of my buzz bait over there. I mean, that fish just exploded on it. You'll, I guess you'll miss the fight and the release, but at any rate, you'll see it on the back camera. It won't get really a close-up, but that was amazing. Hopefully I don't do that again. Well, that didn't take long. It's like the rain has just moved in. I think you can see it over there. And I've got rain gear, but my son doesn't. I know that that's kind of a personal problem, but... Uh, I've got a little bit of mercy just because he is my uh, my flesh and blood. We're hoping that it's going to just kind of maybe go over us or skirt on by here and it won't be too much of a downpour and we can get back to recording. But for now, we're going to have to shut things off.
That's so much better. Kind of trying to, yes. Oh, there it is. Nice fish. No, no, it's okay. Yes. Well, that one's a post spawn one. Look how lean she is. Okay, girl, let me just. <laughs> Wow, that thing's thin. Still got a lot of spunk in her though. All right. Oh wow, look at that. Look at him, look at him chasing bat. Chasing right there, Daniel. Where'd they go? Where'd they go? Maybe they went down here. That's so unfair. Oh, there they are, dude. They're busting again over there. Oh, I got one. Got him on a wake bait. Yes. What? Yeah, I am filming. <laughs> I kind of switched up to a wake bait just because I felt like them eating that buzz bait, they would they would actually eat a wake bait as well. So just relate just continuing to stay in tune with surface type baits. That's a nice fish right there. Woo! Daniel, your turn. Dude, they were just busting right over there. Here, I want you to throw this. I want you to throw this. Just take Is this. A yeah, it's a crankbait. Just throw it and then just reel it up on top and it just goes cluck, 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 cluck. It's a wake bait. <laughs> he just ate it like 20 feet, 20 feet off the boat. Awesome. It's not a very big one, but he was fun. It's amazing to think that this is Memorial Day weekend on Lake Fork and I can just see one boat over there, another boat over there, three, maybe five boats total if I'd look in a 360 degree direction here. Definitely not the norm for this lake. Go ahead and make a sidearm cast and then switch. As soon as it hits, just exchange hands and and begin your retrieve another thing that i suggest is if you cast it out there and you can't do that then just lift up your rod oh there's one <laughs> just lift up your rod and oh he came off to get that thing going and that was a great example of why it's so important to have that thing moving as soon as it hits the water a lot of times they'll see that commotion run over to it and think oh there's a shad that's up there i need to try, try to take advantage of something that's struggling on top of the water and and a lot of times they just they're just drawn to that commotion of the bait hitting the water so it's important to uh, keep that thing going straight out out of the gates because of the conditions we have in a situation where these fish are still up here the shad are still here the bass are still here and we're again because of the conditions the fish are up here shallower feeding on these bait fish longer and possibly even the bait fish are spawning longer than on a bright sunny calm day and then obviously with the low pressure because of the storms makes these fish a little more aggressive a little more uh and exhibiting more of a feeding type behavior <laughs> oh yes Not a very big one, but he's fun. When you can catch fish on a buzz bait, I'm telling you, watching that little prop come across the water and them just take it, poosh. Oh, gosh, big guy, you had one just toilet flush you. Get him. We 
are going to have to call this day because I think it's raining just about everywhere but right where we're standing. So, as much as I want to keep fishing, we probably need to uh, put a cap on the day. So my son and I didn't quite get a half a day on the water. He didn't have a rain suit as you could see and I didn't really want to mess with the lightning like I said. That's just not not, not smart. It's not a thing to do. Um, definitely uh, don't want to do that with my son in the boat and I shouldn't do that just being responsible. At any rate, those, those bass we caught uh, came on a few different things. Um, caught some on a wake bait and that wake bait because of its lift design helps it to stay on the water and create a wake as I reel it through and uh, across the top of the water. It's a great bait, has a nice rattle, kind of draws the fish's attention to them. I noticed some fish schooling and chasing bait in the, in the shallows and that's when I picked that up. I initially had a fish eat a buzz bait and sometimes I want to experiment to see maybe they don't want to go to the clear to the top, maybe something just subsurface like a swim jig is something they'd like to eat. So I definitely tried the swim jig and that, that did produce a fish for me. And I had some fish kind of roll on it too, but they didn't quite get it. The star performer of the day was the buzz bait. And this is a, kind of a modified buzz bait. Usually buzz baits have a skirt type design. This one has a, a striking gurgle toad on it. This is a quarter ounce series with a smaller prop. Look like the bait fish were a little smaller. So this smaller uh, propped buzz bait with the small, uh, Gurgle Toad is what we caught most of the fish on. This is actually the, the regular size. I ran out of the smaller Gurgle, gurgle Toads. But that's, those were some of the baits that we used and, um, and uh, really just had a good time getting out there with my son, uh, being able to uh, dodge the storms, get out there and spend a little time before it got bad, before we got soaked. And I think we timed it just right. Doesn't always work out like that. Again, this video is brought to you by Geico, and I thank you guys for watching, and until next time, good fishing.